Hello everyone, thank you so much for tuning in to my talk. My name is Mark Johnson, I'm a lecturer at the University of Sydney and this paper is about the uh, off-camera or off-stream work and labour which go into creating successful or enjoyable Twitch broadcasts. Now, seeing as this is a game studies conference, I'm sure we all know what Twitch is, but at the same time, of course, lots of games people don't necessarily, don't necessarily spend much or even any time on Twitch and might not be familiar with the uh, platform and in particular the kind of scope and scale of what Twitch has turned into in the last few years. And so I think a kind of brief intro here is useful to ground why Twitch is this increasingly important site for when we want to study phenomena like uh, playbook or game work. So Twitch in most countries is the dominant live streaming platform for the broadcast of all kinds of content, although primarily games. And prior to COVID, Twitch boasted well over uh, 2 million people who regularly broadcast themselves on Twitch, and almost all of whom were broadcasting games content, and well over 100 million people who, to, who tuned in on some kind of regular basis. Although I don't think the COVID slash during COVID slash post COVID stats are out yet, um, I have seen figures which seem to suggest that both of these uh, numbers might have at least doubled since the start of the pandemic and while of course large volumes of people on twitch are, are there purely for leisure or to socialize with friends or to keep up with friends or to um, join communities of players and fans on twitch and all these sorts of things we should also keep in mind that many streamers also do aim to make some kind of money from this practice and many tens of thousands do and within that, there's a kind of smaller elite in air quotes who make full who make full time livings on Twitch. And there's probably a few thousand people who have this latter uh, status um, and that can range from a kind of middle five figure income up to six figure incomes for the most successful streamers and even up to seven figure incomes for a small number of kind of mega uh, superstars who game stream on Twitch. Now, as you might expect, uh, as, Twitch, as Twitch streaming and as this kind of central role of game streaming within kind of, game, within kind of gaming culture and gaming life has grown, of course, game study scholarship on Twitch has, has also uh, rapidly expanded with, within the last five years. And there's now quite a range of different distinctive research agendas within this space, but the one that I want to kind of focus on here is the question of uh, labour. So, for instance, a number of scholars have noted how uh, Twitch is a site which privileges the uh, labour and the work and the efforts of certain demographics of streamers and makes it, and, and also at the same time, through a mix of both cultural and infrastructural and also technological aspects makes it harder for other more marginalized demographics to experience the same kinds of success on that platform. And one other important part of this is that, um, as people like uh, Austin Walker and Will Parton have noted, is the Twitch's um, infrastructure both supports and encourages streamers in tracking themselves and kind of tracking their streams and their stats and their view and their viewer numbers and how much money they make and how, for instance, how much money they make might link up with what games they play or might link up with how often they talk in chat or, or what times of day they stream and all these sorts of things. So there's a lot of stuff going on on, on Twitch, which encourages stream, which encourages streamers, whether they are professionals whether they aspire to make money or even if they even if they are merely doing twitch for leisure there's a lot of systems there which encourage people to track and to reflect on and to try to kind of upgrade and optimize how they spend their time on twitch and within this context my own work also has um, explored the careers of uh, full-time live streamers the quite often quite strongly neoliberal and entrepreneurial mindsets which many of the most successful live streamers exhibit and also the role of uh, affect within live streaming as well. In particular however I want to draw attention to a piece from uh, five years back by, uh, by Emma Wachowski and co-authors 
um, who argued that it was important to look at the kind of hidden labor of streamers, which we don't necessarily see on Twitch itself, but this has yet to really be examined in any kind of detail. And so the core research questions here go, going into this project and this paper are questions like what goes on behind the camera, which viewers don't see? What sorts of things do streamers do? Again, whether they are leisure streamers or semi-pro streamers or aspirational streamers or full-time streamers, what sort of things are required off stream to make streams go smoothly and run well and to create and maintain that stream and the viewers sense what that stream is and so on? What sorts of expectations, motivations and pressures are there on game live streamers which we don't see or at least which, which we don't uh, necessarily see? on Twitch and also what kinds of outside uh, actors or people or platforms or networks or whatever are also involved in this process. So in terms of methodology, briefly speaking, this project draws on um, roughly five or six years of both interview and ethnographic work. In the first case, this, this draws on uh, roughly 100 interviews with mostly full with mostly full time professional streamers and a small number of kind of middle ground sort of part-time aspirational streamers who make some of their income from Twitch but not uh, all of it and these range from between about 10 minutes and 90 minutes in length. Uh, most of these were carried out in 20, between 2016 and 2018 though I'm carrying out uh, more right now and also the ethnographic component of this research uh, has involved both viewing a large number of Twitch streams with as diverse a range of streamers, games, genres, time zones, etc. as one could get, uh, and also offline observations at uh, streaming or streaming related events in the UK, in the US, in Germany, Poland, and also in Brazil. And for fairly obvious reasons. That uh, side of the research is on pause right now, although I do hope to pick up on that in the next year or so. So first off, one of the, one of the most important kinds of off-stream work, which lots of game streamers do, and this applies to those who do this as a full-time job, or those who earn some money, or those who do Twitch for pure leisure, is that streamers spend a lot of time making the aesthetics of their broadcast stand out and be in, and be at least in some way distinct from that of others. And this has quite a range of things. This could be how the layout of their stream works. This could be a, a VTuber persona. This could be graphics. This could be animations. This could be sound. This could be the the uh, icons or the kind of badges for being a subscriber or for uh, donating money. This could be all kinds of things. Um, and as you can see, I think from from these quotes, and there's more in the full paper, of course. Um, lots of game streamers stressed how important the distinctive aesthetics of someone's stream is, and also that these create this sense of a kind of distinctive place in your stream, which is in some sense unlike other streams, and that this is, and, and that this is something which viewers see and appreciate and something which viewers want to see change and evolve over time as well. One streamer used the term artwork upkeep, which I think is a very intriguing term for a digital asset which does not rot, as what they of course mean by that is that Although you want your stream to look distinctive, you must also continually be adding, updating, changing, and so on. And as a side note here, we also see now that there are third-party actors who can, who can be paid to make your stream aesthetics for you, and lots of streamers also do that. Game live streamers on Twitch also spend a lot of time in other people's channels. And while, of course, some part of this is for leisure, and it would not be at all uh, fair or true to imply that every time a game streamer is in someone else's channel, there's a kind of strategic objective to it. But for the more aspirational live streamers, um, quite a number explained to us that um, the time spent in other channels does have a kind of 
pragmatic instrumental goal also where you are trying to make yourself seen within the wider community of people who play the game or games or genres which you play and so on um, also potentially finding people who you might want to play multiplayer games with or who you might want to exchange levels with in that in a uh, in some kind of level maker game or finding people who could be good mods these sorts of things so there's also a value judgment for a lot of game streamers in the time they spend in other channels as well as the fun or the leisure and so on which they get from watching other streams and some game streamers even said or even um admitted perhaps that one of the goals here is to try to poach viewers from other channels um, and I'm sure that, that those of you who spend time on Twitch have seen that often people will people within the same sorts of games and genres and so on will have um, reciprocal subscriptions to each other and that makes uh, you more visible in somewhere in someone else's channel by virtue of having the uh, sub icon and often streamers will make other streamers who are well known within their games or their genres into mods in their channel with the expectation that that same favor will then be reciprocated and so all streamers within a kind of little ecosystem are both in some sense kind of collaboratively working to build that ecosystem but also in another sense sort of trying to poach viewers sort of trying to make themselves as visible within that space as they can be. The third kind of uh, off-camera or off-stream labour which I found game live streamers performing takes, takes place in fact on other platforms. And so while many Twitch streamers as I've shown in previous work have a very strong sort of emotional or personal connection to Twitch or even in some cases to, to, uh, to Twitch's staff, um, a lot of the off-screen time of many game streamers is spent outside of Twitch and there's a, and there's a range of uh, subsets of what this entails. So in one case, for instance, lots, lots of game streamers on Twitch also have a, you have a YouTube channel where they will upload their streams, either edited or completely unedited both in order to um, appeal to people who aren't there to watch the stream live but also more broadly to appeal to people who are who are on or think of themselves as being kind of youtube users rather than twitch users but there's also a kind of second uh, aspect to this which is that lots of game streamers create communities around their stream their twitch stream but on other platforms so lots of streamers for instance create uh channels on discord or on teamspeak or on slack or a subreddit these sorts of things which are specifically about their streaming channel and one of the main goals here seems to be to kind of continually keep people engaged even if only implicitly only kind of tacitly with your brand with your name with your channel with the genres you play and so on even when you are not in fact live streaming on Twitch. And so while of course all, all streamers uh, aim to build communities on Twitch itself, many of the more aspirational ones and even many who do Twitch purely as leisure or as relaxation wind up creating these off Twitch communities on other platforms which all in turn feed back in some sense to their Twitch channel. The final aspect of off-stream labour which this study found, which might seem at first glance to be the most um, mundane and yet I think also shows us in some ways the, the most about how ideas of play and labour and time and so on are, are being reshaped for game streamers on Twitch, is that um, a few respondents mentioned the role of what I think we should think of as kind of everyday main maintenance work uh, on their Twitch stream. So this is things like responding to emails or um, talking to sponsors or looking up games which you might want to play in the future or buying games of course which you want to then play on stream or spend 
spending time with one's mod with one's team of uh, mods or moderators um, and having meetings with them say every week every fortnight every month and so on or talking to people who might sponsor you or and this quote i think is uh, quite telling optimizing different ways to create revenue un unquote uh, and also things like uh, like I mentioned in one of the earlier slides, these sorts of everyday maintenance activities also involve things like looking at stats or, or kind of checking numbers and figures and seeing how well your stream is doing compared to past streams and all these sorts of things. And these are things which uh, streamers tend to do most days or every day or at least extremely uh, often. And yet, very, and yet very few streamers mentioned these most kind of quotidian live streaming uh, tasks. And why could that be? Well, what I want to argue is that in game live streaming, these have, all, these have already become so commonplace as to no longer seem noteworthy to game streamers when asked about the kind of work they do. They tended to focus on the more kind of unusual or the more striking or I guess in some sense the more kind of game streaming specific forms of work right in that very in that very in that very few forms of online digital work require you to consistently change the aesthetics of some web page or some uh, platform but in the case of Twitch they they do and so streamers talked about that a lot where as things like check where as things like checking emails and checking stats and updating posts and all this type of stuff has even though game streaming is so strongly framed by twitch and by many streamers as a form of leisure a form of play a form of relaxation and so on these kinds of everyday digital labor activities which we find in so many other sorts sorts of jobs have or have already now reached the point where they are so normal for game live streamers to do that in most cases they don't even think that this is something worth uh, mentioning and indeed when we think about this more it is hard to imagine any streamer at any kind of level in air quotes to not want to respond to viewer emails or to ignore uh, making sure that their mods are are reflecting how they how they want their stream to work and all these sorts of things and so within this context, game live streaming seems to be no exception to this ongoing norm, uh, normalizing of extra labor and increasing working hours in many sectors, such as also, of course, academia. So to sum up, there seem to be four main aspects to off stream or off camera work for game streamers on Twitch. The first of these being working on your channel, on your channel aesthetics, which could be things like graphics or sounds or layouts and so on. The second of these being a question of networking, which is partly about making oneself visible in other streams. And like I mentioned, has this almost kind of game theory aspect to it, where it's partly cooperative, part and partly competitive. Uh, the third of these being the time that Twitch streamers spend on other platforms such as YouTube and, Twi and uh, Twitter and Discord and so on, both trying to appeal to other commun communities and grow their channels, but also trying to uh, keep viewers engaged with their content or with their brand to some extent, even when they aren't on stream. And like I say, even people who don't do Twitch as a full-time job still do this type of stuff. Um, and also the everyday main work of having a Twitch stream, such as such as dealing with uh, moderators and e and emails and so on, which in most cases has become so standard now for game streamers, even those who have no financial aspirations with the platform, that it rarely in fact gets mentioned. And so what we see here is that off camera and not laboring are not really the, the same thing in game streaming. And this I think is important because it upsets what viewers perceive as people who watch game streaming content, especially because streamers like, like uh, I and other scholars have noted, work hard to present their streams as kind of informal and off the cuff and relaxed and so on, when in fact, as I hope I've shown here at extremely high speed, this is not always the case. And that's pretty much everything I have to say. Thank you again for listening to this paper. If you want to read some of my existing work on Twitch, uh, check out some of these links. 
And if you would like a preprint of uh, this paper, please send me a message on Twitter or by email or wherever, and I'll be sure to send it along. Thanks, everyone. Take care. Bye for now.